This is a demonstration of Preactor being used in a make-to-order job shop. It has constraints such as machines, operators, etc. We are running this example in Preactor 300 FCS evaluation mode where all dates are in the year 2000. The demo is designed to show just a few features of Preactor. This is the Preactor workspace. It is an easy to use interface from where you can access and edit data, data maintenance, access help, import and export data to and from other systems, and access the Preactor sequencer where you generate and interact with the production schedule. First we will import the orders to schedule. Then we will access the Preactor sequencer by clicking on the Generate Schedule icon. This is the Preactor sequencer screen. The Gantt chart shows the resources to be scheduled in the vertical axis and time on the horizontal axis. The shaded areas represent different shift states such as short breaks or off shift. The icons at the bottom in the Unscheduled Operations window represent the tasks or process steps to be scheduled. One icon for each operation step in each of the orders. We will be using the automatic features to load the operations onto the resources in just a moment. But first, let's look at how we can drag an individual operation onto the Gantt chart. When the operation is dragged onto the Gantt chart, it appears as a bar, the length of which gives the total time it will occupy the resource, including setup and runtime. Preactor will only allow an operation to be dragged onto a valid resource, one that you have defined can carry out the required process. The bar changes to a no entry icon if the resource is not valid. Preactor automatically calculates the length of the process step based on the run rate specified and the resource status. If you drag the bar over an off-shift period, it will automatically change the length of the bar to match the start and end time, taking into account the off-shift period. The black section at the front of the bar represents the start and end of the setup time. With Preactor, you can define a fixed setup time or sequence dependent. That is, the setup will vary depending on the attributes of the batch which occupied the resource before this one. However, we want Preactor's power to load the orders we have automatically onto the resources available, taking into account all the constraints we have applied. Now the schedule has been generated. We chose to forward load based on the priority set for each order. Preactor has selected a resource for each operation based on the earliest finish time. This is often called load levelling. Each resource has a number of operations allocated to it in a specific sequence over the period of the schedule. It details when each operation can start and when it should be completed. We can see the sequence of operations for a single order, its route, by either right-clicking with the mouse on an operation and selecting the highlight entire order, or we can click on an operation with the Alt key depressed on your keyboard. Order A010 has its route highlighted while all other orders are greyed out. Here the first operation has been allocated to the lathe, the second on the drill and so on. The time at the end of the last operation is when this order will be completed. In this example we are applying multiple constraints to each operation step. You can see the usage of these other constraints. We call them secondary constraints in a plot window. This is the secondary constraint plot window. We have two plots active in this example. One for operators and the other for power. The red line shows the maximum number or amount available over time. For example, we have a maximum of three operators that does not vary while the maximum amount of power available varies. The red line increases and decreases over the period of the schedule. We will now change the windows so we can see the Gantt charts and the plots. All windows can be managed in this way to create the working layout you like and save the layout when you exit the sequencer. You can see which operations are using the operators, for example, by dragging across the operators plot. All operations on the Gantt chart are greyed out, apart from those that are using an operator.
You can also interact with the schedule. You can drag and drop an operation to a different time or resource. If Preacta finds that you have broken a secondary constraint, it will warn you with a message and also the plot will change colour. In this case, we have chosen to accept the requirement for an additional operator. However, in moving the first operation, later we will need to adjust subsequent operations too. Preacta has a schedule repair feature to do that for you. Preact has now moved the operations in the schedule to take into account the new timing and constraints. To see the impact of removing all secondary constraints in the schedule, you can disable them. Now see the impact by rescheduling. First remove all the operations from the Gantt chart and reschedule. Now we have a new schedule which is much shorter in time to complete because we have removed some of the constraints. The plots show where we have gone over the maximum we have available. You can see the previous schedule using the undo button. The bar tool is used to change the colour of bars, change the text on them and to locate. Here we will select two orders that have text with different colours. Red text means that the operation finishes later than the due date. Yellow text means that the operation finishes close to the due date and is therefore at risk should any delay occur in previous operations. You can also change the text that appears on the bar interactively. You can also select different attributes of an order to decide the colour of the bars. Here we will change the colour according to the customer. Other attributes are available from the drop-down list. 